Intel have finally released their budget-orientated 12th generation i5 and i3 processors. In particular, I'm gonna be testing here today the i5 12400F and also the i3 12100F box coolers. Now straight away, the first difference is that these coolers weigh in heavier than previous box coolers from Intel, both their previous 11th and 10th gen all black cooling solution and also their original silver, black and ketchup and mustard cooler where they released that with 9th gen and earlier CPUs. Though straight away, out of the gate, this cooler weighs in at 350 grams roughly on the i5 variant. The i3 variant was, I found here at the studio, 10 grams lighter, weighing in at 340 grams roughly. Now the only physical difference I could see between these two cooling solutions was some dimples in the plastic underneath the fan. Other than that, they both come with brand new push pin system and also pre-applied thermal paste. However, let's get down to the most important details, and that is, is this cooler going to be good enough or should you go out and buy an aftermarket cooling solution like the infamous AliExpress Snowman? Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and before we get into the results, I did decide to run a few different tests on this system. And the first difference, or should I say lack of differences to point out, is there is no difference between the i3 and the i5 cooler. They performed pretty much identical in the numbers. And the second point that we're gonna make is that the thermal paste included on these coolers out of the box is actually really good. I decided to test some aftermarket paste after doing the initial test, it actually ran one degree hotter on the aftermarket paste. So Intel have done a good job of including pretty good thermal paste on these coolers from the get-go. Now the third test relates to the stock coolers previous generations on 11th gen and under, and these coolers unfortunately will just not do the job on 12th generation CPUs. On both the tests we conducted on the 11th and 10th gen black cooler, as well as the previous copper slug cooler, with ketchup and mustard, it failed the test almost instantly. We went up to 100 degrees and then we got met with a blue screen. So unfortunately they just won't do the job on LGA 1700. Also, we are measuring today with the direct power draw coming from the hardware itself via the CPU 8 pin. And then we're gonna be comparing that against the software, which does give us some very good insight into how the new 12th generation CPUs do draw power and how they perform. And from this testing, I've also found out something that I never intended to, and that's in relation to stuttering. And now it's time to present to you guys the i3 and i5 numbers, where we'll start off with the i5 12400F at its default settings. And here's where it runs at four gigahertz all cores across six cores, 12 threads and then it's single core boost to 4.4 gigahertz, and we get a Cinebench score over 12,000 points, which is actually very impressive, the performance. But we'll take a look at the performance in a separate video, which is upcoming here at the channel. First thing you may notice though, is your eyes will probably be drawn to that 96 degree temperature, which is actually quite bad. And once it reaches 100 degrees, you will get performance throttling. And this 96 degree temperature was done in a 28 degrees Celsius environment, and another thing that actually makes this cooler just barely passable in terms of recommendations is the noise. And here's where it went up to 49 decibels, getting actually quite loud. I'll let you guys take a quick listen to three different profiles of the stock cooler versus the remaining, and I'm gonna to say top dog in the fight, the snowman. So what you may have noticed there, I included the gaming noise levels because they were actually significantly lower than the full 100% stress test numbers. So not all people are buying the 12400F or the 12100F to just stress it to 100% on all cores or threads. I do understand that. A lot of people are gonna be buying it for that single core performance as well as having the extra cores and threads there for gaming that utilizes that multi-core setup. 
And so for gaming, the stock cooler is going to be okay. It clocked in at 87 degrees, which was still quite high during gaming, as opposed to the snowman, which got up to 66 degrees. But what you may have noticed there was that the snowman at full stress settings is coming in 24 degrees cooler than that of the stock Intel 12th gen cooler. And it's also coming in with a lot lower of a noise profile. So I've hyped about this cooler in the past, the snowman, but after seeing these results here today, I'm actually even more hyped about this cooler. And I've said this in the past, this cooler right here is simply the best value you can get for a CPU cooler, period. It's coming in around 20 US dollars shipped worldwide, and I can't say enough good things about it. After seeing these results, especially on LGA 1700, where people say there's particular mounting issues on certain coolers, this thing absolutely nailed it. The one thing that did concern me about this stock Intel cooler here was not only the temperatures, but also the higher power draw as a result of those higher temperatures. And here's where we measured up to 122 watts on the i5-12400F when being fully stressed. Gaming numbers were a little bit different. They were actually kind of inconsistent in that I couldn't measure them properly, but they were lower than that of the full stress test. But at 122 watts, this is quite concerning because we're told in the software that it's going up to a maximum of 99 watts. So the software isn't giving you the correct power draw that is going direct into the CPU. But that 122 watts, I'm now gonna show you guys what the snowman was doing because what you'll see here is the snowman was not only coming in with lower power draw, but it was much more consistent in that it was hanging around 90 watts as opposed to the stock cooler, which was going up to 122 watts, but even hanging around 110 watts, it was just bouncing up and down more inconsistently and more sporadic than that of the snowman cooler. So what I'm gonna look at here, and as we hinted at before in the video, was that this could be a contributing factor to stuttering. Because when we're seeing that bouncing up and down, at least when I'm testing games, if I see FPS bouncing up and down, that's usually because we're getting micro stuttering. So not only is this stock Intel cooler only just cutting it on the 12400F, it's also giving out something that I would be concerned about and if you were looking for the best performance possible, I would in this case actually recommend going out and getting an aftermarket cooling solution. But you may now be at this point in the video where you're gonna pause me and say, well, Brian, the six cores, 12 threads, that's gonna use up more power than the four core, eight threaded 12100F. And you would be correct, but it's also actually quite a similar story, if not worse in some degrees, than the 12400F, where we'll pull up the results here for this cooling solution where we went up to 97 degrees on the 12100F with the same ambient temperatures and the power draw was a similar story as the 12400F. Here we saw a maximum all core speed of 4.1 gigahertz across all four cores with a single core boost of 4.3 gigahertz. So it's got a tighter band there in terms of its speeds, but that extra 100 megahertz is allowing it to run a little bit hotter than the 12400F but coupled in with the fact that after seeing these results, I do personally believe that the 12100F is actually a quite considerably worse binned CPU than the 12400F. And this was evidenced in the fact that I actually couldn't run the 12100F with four memory sticks of DDR4 at 3600 megahertz. I actually had to drop it to 3466 megahertz. And on the 12400F, I actually had no problems running the 3600 megahertz across all four sticks. Though again, just like the 12400F, we saw a huge drop when we put the snowman on going from 97 degrees all the way down to 73 degrees. So it was again, a identical 24 degree drop. And we saw the inconsistent power behavior just like the 12400F, where not only the software readout was giving us inconsistent numbers versus the hardware readout, where we had 82 watts peak versus 106 watt peak. Then on the snowman, we had 73 watts versus 93 watts. But now it's time for a clean cut recommendation on the stock 12th gen Intel cooler. And what we saw here with the numbers, basically, if you guys are gonna be using the 12100F or the 12400F for things that incur 100% CPU performance, whether that's doing some video editing or whether that's gonna be doing other things like simulations or calculations, then you will definitely want to get a better cooling solution. Not only were the temperatures going near that of 100 degrees, but the noise was just simply unbearable as we heard before. But not only is your CPU gonna be running a lot cooler and with a lot less noise if you go with something like a snowman, but you're also gonna be using less power in the process since that temperature difference was actually quite huge. 
But if all you're gonna be doing with a 12100F or a 12400F is gaming, then this cooler will do a pretty good job where the noise wasn't that bad and the temperatures were okay. But the final thing to touch on is the aesthetics and I think Intel have done a really good job here with the looks of this cooler, but also the build quality does feel very solid. I would say it's miles better than their previous generation coolers, perhaps with the exception of their water cooler or their X79 LED cooler. Though with all that aside, do let us know in the comments below what you think of the new Intel cooler. And also, of course, let us know what you think of the Snowman, my personal favorite. I'll actually leave some links in the description below if you wish to cop yourself one of these coolers, which I actually personally have a lot of Snowman, plural, around here at the studio. Though, love reading those thoughts and opinions, as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Chad Cormier. And they say, long time viewer, your videos have gotten me through some hard patches. And I love reading that. I love helping you guys out any way I can, especially with the information in the videos. I started PC flipping because of your guidance and positive attitude. Watch your videos with my kids. Just one question. Have you been experiencing negative feedback from customers? I've never had an issue for two years. Then this last month, I've had nothing but complaints. Wonder if it's just the times. And so it's funny you bring this up, where personally I have noticed a little bit of an uptick in complaints, but this may have to do with, in my opinion, something called the misery index. And this is actually a simple equation that in the end, governments cannot mask because the result comes out on your local streets. And this usually follows one, but not the other, in that the higher inflation goes, the higher unemployment truly goes. And so the higher this is, the more people in society are going to be upset, they're gonna be essentially miserable, and you will see higher complaints about generally everything as a result of this. So for me personally, when it comes to selling PCs, I have talked about my process and what I do. I'll put a link to a video up here if you guys wish to see that. And in the meantime, if you stayed this far, of course, and you're enjoying that Tech yes content, you know what to do. And if you wanna become a member for as little as a dollar a month, you get access to some behind the scenes footage, which is where this question actually came from. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.